For this demo, we're going to be talking about the types of dates SAP calculates and how float is determined. Some of the screenshots represented in this demo will not have been executed in the current stages of your network and activity project that you are on. They're here, they're included in this demo as an example. Once you complete all of the follow-up exercises in uh, the process of building your network and activity project, you'll encounter all of the dates and the float that are represented here. So there are four sets of dates on all levels of a project. For example, on your WBS elements, your networks or activities. These can be used in project systems in order to distinguish between planning and execution in a project. In the graphic, which you encountered from Dropbox, uh, that is titled Types of Dates, SAP Calculates and How Float is Determined, you'll see which types of dates are supported by which project object. So first we're going to look at our basic dates. Basic dates are planned manually or from scheduled dates and can act as constraints for network scheduling. Basic dates are the dates that have binding characters and for time scheduling and other related areas such as capacity planning or the influence your reservations or purchase requisitions and all of your capacity requirements. What we'll do here is we'll look in our work area to observe these dates so we can go down and pick say our first uh, WBS element and with, with networks and activities on it and choose dates and you'll see that we have basic dates represented here. Other places you can see them would be, for example, in a structure report. And I just ran CN41N. I've already got it pulled up, and I've already got my uh, columns changed here to show that basic dates, basic starts, basic finish are represented on, in a structure report also. Now we'll move on to forecast dates. So we'll jump back to our project. Forecast dates are another set of dates which are used as ongoing comparisons in your project. It's sort of a baseline throughout the project. Forecast dates have no influence on your reservations, purchase requisitions, or any capacity requirements. These can be used to hold a copy of the basic dates and left alone for uh, until you have any further detailed planning that you need to carry out. Creating a forecast set of dates can be done in your project planning board or your Gantt chart. So you just need to go in and change the field selection to bring up the basic start finish dates if those aren't there. We'll go into our Gantt chart. And you'll see that the start date, basic start, basic finish are already included in mine. If you need to change your field, you can go up to your field selection icon and include what you need to include. So to create a baseline, we'll begin by selecting all of our project lines. So we need to get all these selected. We'll use our Select All icon, and we'll go up to um, Transfer a Copy of our Basic Dates. So we'll go up to Edit. We'll go to Reconcile Dates, and we're going to go to Transfer Basic Date to Forecast. We'll click that. We'll say yes to the WBS elements being scheduled. Don't worry about the error if a, if a capacity category uh, error comes up on the bottom of the screen. And one thing you'll notice here is that it had, we haven't affected our network graphic yet. So what we'll do to, to see the effects that it actually had on our graphics so we can see our forecasted dates is we can go up and we can choose our set of dates view icon. Go in here and we'll tell it to show us our forecasted dates. You can pick latest dates too and we'll hit confirm and you'll see the graphic has changed. One note to that, if you would like a definition as to what these colors are for, you can go choose your legend icon and that will bring up a screen that will go through and tell you what all the, the colors represent within the graphic. So if you go out, in, out of uh, Project Planning Board and you pick different WBS elements in their coinciding date tabs, you can observe all your forecasted dates and your basic dates, just like we were on the opening screen. Next, we'll move on to our scheduling dates. So scheduled dates are the start and finish dates of activities calculated by the system in scheduling. So these dates are actually the ones that are calculated when you um, plan an activity and schedule an activity. So for WBS elements that scheduled dates are determined from the scheduled dates of the activities 
that are assigned to the WBS element. They can be extrapolated from the lowest level WBS up the WBS hierarchy in the project planning board and used as constraints if you, if you so desired or if the project requires it. Scheduled dates are determined by automated network scheduling. In network activities, these are called earliest and latest dates, which you'll see here. And we've got our earliest and latest dates represented in this scale. So this, this is just uh, your, your screenshot from your project planning board will look similar to this. And what you need to notice, if you need to bring them in, you can go to your field selection and bring in your earliest start, latest finish. And that's going to be what your forecasted dates are, or what your scheduled dates are going to show. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we are going to um, confirm that we have our free scheduling on and with our top down and our adjust, ba our adjust basic dates radio box checked. That's how you'll get to see these and you'll get these. So what you'll need to do is go up and have confirm you have free scheduling. Go to our options. We have free scheduling. We've confirmed that. We want our adjust basic dates checked. This is where you'll choose your select all icon and you'll hit reschedule and that's how you'll acquire the forecasted dates there. One thing you can think about is what happens when you make the same change in the duration with the adjust, base, adjust basic dates radio box unchecked. How is that going to affect your project? Is it going to change the end date? Is it not going to change the end date? Or another thing is what happens when you change scheduling scenario to bottom up? How are your dates going to change? You can go through and attempt those exercises and see how your dates change. Note the dates though. Next what we're going to move on to is we're going to move on to our actual dates. This activity should specifically be revisited after you've completed the rest of the scheduling training. So do not conduct this exercise on your project until the other training lessons have been completed. Your actual dates are set in project execution phase. For example, by entering actual dates for WBS elements in the project planning board or by confirmation of network activities via transaction code CN25. So actual dates are also entered manually via CATS, which is another transaction code, the date of the first CATS entry on an activity becomes the early scheduled basic start date of that task. So to maintain actual dates on your project, you have to change the dates you originally set up on your project. The goal is to reschedule a project so that, that the activities is completed one week prior to the current date. So what we'll do is we'll begin by shifting dates on the project. We'll go up here. First we're going to need to select all, so we've got our everything selected we'll go up to edit shift dates this is going to change all of our dates for our project because if you remember when we originally built the project we started it two months out but we need to confirm an activity that happened last week so we need to change and shift our dates of the entire project and what we're going to do is we're going to just go ahead and change them to a week from your or a week from your current date prior to. And then again we should say yes for the should the WBS elements be scheduled. and we'll just use our basic dates, not our forecasted dates. What we can do here is what you're seeing here is our forecasted dates. So we can go in and eliminate those. So you won't see those on your graphic anymore. Now what we're going to do is we're going to need to change our time scale so we can actually see our dates. So you can go into here you can pick evaluation lead time. And then if that doesn't come up right away, we'll say no on spa save specific user data. And we'll go back in and now you can actually see our dates. It just needed to essentially refresh.
and just for the sake of seeing a little bit less of that lead we'll go in here and we'll put in five Then we'll have our actual column you can see here all right so what we've done there is this black line represents today or the current day that you have and what we've done is we've readjusted the project to have started previously prior to um, this week so that we've got a, an activity completed so what we need to do now is save our data and this is one of the reasons why you're doing this at the very end of uh, your scheduling training So we've saved our boat demo, our demo days, or our, our project is now rescheduled. You'll see our start date was 1-2-2014 now instead of in March as it was previously. You can't have your project open, so you have to back out of it. Next what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, confirm our actual dates. So we're going to go into transaction code CN25. And here's what we're going to need here. You're going to need your network and your activity. So if you didn't take note of your network and activity, you can either open something like this and find your network and activity numbers here. It's just the structure report. Or you can go to your project builder and open it and take a look. So this was one of my activities that were completed. I'll show you it's uh, 4,143. That would be this activity right here. That's our drive shaft. We'll confirm that. And our activity number was 0010. We'll hit enter. So that's brought us into our activity, and you'll see that our posting date will be the current day you're on. First, what you're going to need to do is we're going to need to choose our processing percentage. We're going to go ahead and do a uh, full confirmation. You can do partial confirmations. One thing you should notice here is the actual date here at the bottom of your screen. That 40 hours is in a forecasted column. That'll change to be an actual work once we hit enter. So we'll hit yes, do you want to enter the final confirmation? You'll notice that 40 just went up to there. What you're going to need to do next is save the project. And that's just the activity type. It's just saying that it, it'll still save. So that's saved. Now we can go back and confirm that in our project. reopen our project and we'll extend that we need to go back into our Gantt chart and what you'll notice here is that we confirmed activity drive shaft for 40 hours of work so in our actual work column we've confirmed that and you'll see over here that the graphic actually changed also to represent the fact that it's been changed. Next what we'll talk about is just a little bit about this graphic and um, what you read in the document that uh, the types of dates SAP calculates and how float is determined. So we're going to talk about float. So networks are always scheduled forward and backward. The scheduling type determines the direction in which you start to schedule, and the system determines the earliest dates of the activities by means of your forward scheduling. The system determines the latest dates of the activity by means of backward scheduling. The difference between the two sets of data is float. So you'll notice over on your graphic we've got float, and this you can pull up with your legend, and you can see which colors represent your float in your activities. And on these, it's this dark green, 
And then the green inside of it is going to represent your total float. So this is the float on a specific activity. That, that light green in there shows you the total float. So total float, the amount of time an activity can be delayed without affecting the WBS element actual finish date, or the amount of time an activity can be shifted from its earliest and latest dates to the future without affecting the latest dates of its successor. So free float is the amount of time that early start of an activity can be delayed without delaying an early start of a successor activity. The amount of time an activity can be shifted from its earliest dates into the future without affecting the earliest dates of its successor. You'll notice in the examples how the total float is, is calculated and the difference between the earliest and latest dates. In that document there are graphics that will show you. And again, the helpful thing in here is to just pull up your legend. If you don't know what one of the colors is, you can go down and search it. And it's going to show you See, there's our free float dates. That's going to be in here. And the arrows are all depicted. There's our basic, late, basic latest dates. The total float can go. So pretty much you just need to get into your graphic and study it. One thing you can also keep in mind on, these, on this graphic is you need to know where your critical path is. The critical path is one or more continuous chains of zero or negative float activities assigned to a WBS element. So red is representing our crit critical path. Also, answering back from your other, uh, one of your other lessons, the normal duration or the remaining duration. That's the amount of time required to complete any activity, and that's all represented in this graphic. And you can see it over on the other side of the screen in your other work area.